Good morning, everyone. It's a very frosty morning. It's minus 12 degrees here in Stockholm. Nice weather, sun is shining, no wind, no snow, perfect conditions for trying a range test with a trailer. So if you ever wondered how much range you will lose with your electric car when towing a trailer, this is the video for you. I will try to do this as scientific as possible. So I will do it in three different runs. The first run will be without any trailer at all. Just the Tesla Model Y performance, in this case from Giga Berlin. The second run will be with a empty trailer attached. The total weight of this trailer is 390 kilograms empty. And the third run will be with the same trailer attached, but fully loaded. So total weight, including the load, 750 kilograms. So that's the three runs. After the three runs are completed, I will dissect all the numbers for you, show you the exact differences between the three different runs, both in consumption and range. That way you will know how your car gets affected by towing a trailer. Let's start with the first cycle with the Tesla Model Y only. So I've just put 25 kilometers behind on the first range test and this is the test without any trailer. As you see, there is no trailer behind the car. And as you see, it's sunny and nice weather outside despite the blistering cold. So average consumption until now, 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers flat. Uh, I mean, that's high, but uh, it's cold outside. So that's the reason. It will probably go down a lot more, but let's see about that. I have never tested this uh, car in this cold before. I mean, a range test and consumption test. So it will be really interesting to see how much the Model Y is affected by the cold weather today. Interesting to see. Just some brief information about the test cycle. It's a 80 kilometers long test cycle. It consists of speeds between 50 all the way up to 110 kilometers per hour. But this time I'm lowering the speed a little bit because the speed limits are normally between 50 all the way up to 110 kilometers per hour. But since it's not allowed to drive faster than 80 kilometers per hour with a trailer, I'm actually lowering the maximum speed from 110 kilometers per hour down to 80 kilometers per hour just to stay at the allowed speed limits because I don't want to get tickets or, or lose my driver's license because of this test. And uh, I always put AC into 20 degrees Celsius and enable eco modes if available, but Tesla doesn't have that. So I'm driving it as usual and sticking to the speed limits all the time. Otherwise, it will be impossible to compare the results. So I've just put 55 kilometers behind, soon finalizing the first stretch of consumption tests without trailer. Current average consumption is just over 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So it has been dropping a bit, but the weather actually got even colder than expected during a certain stretch. It actually hit all the way down to minus 18 degrees Celsius. That's really cold considering I live in Stockholm. That's not the normal weather conditions you get here. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. And I guess it will be exactly the same conditions when I pass the same spot with the trailer. Let's take a short break and talk about my newly released members function here on YouTube. As a member, you get early access to content. You get access to all my test data that I have created during all the tests and reviews I have done. On top of that, you also get unique emojis <laughs> signed by me and priority replies on your comments. Most importantly, this is the best way of supporting my work and to help me staying independent. Thank you. So just finalize the first stretch without any trailer. Average consumption, 20.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That equals to a full range of 364 kilometers. That's not that bad. I mean, given the average temperature of minus 15 degrees Celsius, really cold weather, 
it can be considered as good. And uh, I mean, I needed to keep a lower speed, so it's hard to compare to uh, other tests I have done with the same car, but in higher speeds, I have actually managed to score a lot lower consumption with the exact same car and the exact same tires. Uh, if I remember it correctly, I was able to drive it and consume 15.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer in better conditions. It was a couple of degrees plus in that case and higher average speed because I didn't need to consider the maximum speed for trailer towing in Sweden, that's 80 kilometers per hour. Mm. Given that, a lot lower average speed than I normally do, the, the consumption can be seen as fairly high, but uh, Teslas are normally very efficient, so I guess it will be hard to beat this score with any other electric vehicles currently available. So let's connect the trailer and do the second test and this is the test with a unloaded trailer and after that I will do a fully loaded test with the trailer. I think that's enough. Let's connect it. All done, let's move. First check-in with empty trailer, 28 kilometers past, average consumption, 37.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. That's a lot high, almost 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers more than the same point without a trailer. And this time it's empty. So as you see here, the trailer is on and it's rolling. One thing that seems to have changed with the new software is the illustration when towing. Now it seems like a car is slipstreaming me, keeping and staying very close behind, like half a meter in between the cars. Strangely, it doesn't illustrate a trailer. It knows that I'm pulling a trailer, but still illustrates a normal car. Haven't seen that before. I think that's introduced in the new software seems like a bug so soon hitting 50 kilometers of traveled distance average consumption still really high 35.8 almost 36 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers that's a lot state of charge 27 percent i started off around 77 or 78 and this is the second run of 80 kilometer stretch. So I have been driving almost 140 kilometers oh, since the last charge. I think I will be forced to do a quick stop for charging before running the last run with a loaded trailer. But average consumption almost 36 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. Let's see how this ends up it will be really exciting to compare all the results later on especially the result when comparing a loaded trailer and a unloaded trailer so the same temperature drop actually occurred on the exact same spot as earlier so now currently minus 17 degrees that's cold so i would say that the average temperature during the whole trip is around 15 degrees celsius negative minus cold ice cold just charged up getting ready for the final round with a fully loaded trailer this is the last bits and pieces after that i will be fully ready to go it's getting dark so i'm trying to hurry up a little bit before it gets too dark the video quality gets a bit too bad in dark weather that's why i'm trying to hurry up a little bit so do you think there will be any difference between a fully loaded trailer or an empty trailer? Let me know in the comments below and with how much do you think the difference will be? Let us have a discussion before you watch the end of this video. Let's go.
So just past the 30 kilometer line of the last round with a fully loaded trailer this time. Average consumption until now, 34.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So almost 35 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So almost the same as with a unloaded trailer at this point. Now it's getting colder again. This is the cold section. So uh, minus 16 degrees. Uh, so this is the part where the car actually will start heating the battery pack again. Seems to be engaged around minus 16, minus 17 degrees. Of course, depending on the battery temperature and the, the consumption will probably increase a little bit from here and on. This is interesting. Uh, it seems like the consumption with a loaded compared to a unloaded trailer is around the same. But we are not finished yet, so uh, we will see later on in this test. Let's continue. Soon hitting 70 kilometers on the last run, fully loaded. I must say that the current consumption is really, really exciting. Uh, I did not really expect this. Really interesting results. I'm really not done yet, but I, I can already now see what's happening. I need to do some calculations. I need to do that when I come home, because it's getting too dark. And I will record the rest of the video tomorrow. And until then, I have got a lot of time to calculate dissect the numbers and present them for you in a good and understandable way. I'm also going to do some calculations according to the kinetic laws of energy uh, to be able to see if that result goes hand in hand with my result. So stay tuned. A couple of months ago, I did a range test with five different EVs where one of those were carrying a battery pack of 40 kilograms of extra load. A lot of viewers stated that this was really unfair and that the car with that extra battery pack was losing a lot of range. And I did not agree and I also backed this up with a couple of different calculations to show that the amount of energy or range lost by those 40 kilograms was negligible. This result in this video, this trailer test actually shows that I was right. Let's have a look at the results and compare the three different runs. And as you see here in the graphics, the consumption for the car only was a lot lower than when towing a trailer, whether it was loaded or unloaded. That result gave a total range of 364 kilometers. That's far from the stated WLTP range of 514 kilometers, but still good considered the cold weather, minus 15 degrees as an average temperature. And towing the empty trailer resulted in an increased consumption of 72% compared to not towing anything at all. That's a really big difference. And that actually gave us a total range of 212 kilometers. That's a significant drop compared to the 364 kilometers with no trailer at all. And the difference between the loaded and unloaded trailer is almost none, resulting in a total range of 210 kilometers. So after adding all this weight to the trailer, it resulted in a range loss of two kilometers. That's really astonishing. So why is the difference so small? I mean, most of the energy is consumed during acceleration. And since the tests in this case are more or less constant speeds with smaller differences, a couple of stops, but still mostly highway driving. The energy consumed is to keep the constant speed. And that's more or less affected by physics around the car and the trailer and those are the same so in this case acceleration and deceleration is not as important 
So acceleration also results in deceleration. And deceleration for electric cars results in regeneration or recuperation of energy. So more load results in potentially higher energy that you can recuperate when decelerating. So the extra amount of energy used when accelerating with more weight also leads to higher energy recuperation. And the last and most important factor here is actually friction. One friction is air resistance. Since the volume of the car and the trailer as such are exactly the same for the two last runs, the external friction is the same. The only part that may change is the friction on the trailer. And in this case, the bearings and the actual tires on the trailer. Since the trailer is designed for carrying such a weight as 750 kilograms, the tire pressure, the tires as such, and the bearings are designed for handling that kind of friction and weight, and therefore leading to a very small difference in actual friction and also energy consumption for towing the empty trailer compared to a fully loaded trailer. So what's your view on the result? Do you agree? Do you think it's plausible? Let me know in the comments below, or maybe you are very surprised. Let us talk about it and dissect the numbers even more. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it did shed some light over consumption and range when towing with a fully electric car. Subscribe, like, and engage. And as I always say, stay electric. Thank you for watching. Speak to you soon.